so i think uh, just going through uh, a book like bhagavad gita is not going to be very useful unless we somehow can uh, put it in the practice in our daily life right otherwise it could be even more dangerous in the sense uh, uh, it's easy to develop a ego like now i know this or it's like it can be something like uh, we start judging ourselves based on it right it is written like this i should have not done like that or at, at the very least it's going to be useless in that sense uh, um, not really having a practical application in our life right so in this video what i'm going to do is what i want to do is uh, to see how can we bring these uh, uh, teachings into the practice or how can we test them uh, in our daily life yeah so the traditional way of uh, learning these things are uh, uh, the threefold in vedanta right so shravan manan nididhyasana you first listen it you first just get this teaching either listen it or read it it's all the same you get the teachings right then you do manan which is more like an intellectual understanding you try to understand what is being said intellectually and then nididhyasana nididhyasana is more like meditation meditating upon it seeing like how does it apply to my life uh, thinking about you know putting bringing it again and again and like what does he mean how can i apply this in my life um, and that sort of thing right and obviously the you know, these are the three step but i think obviously the fourth one is we find some opportunities to really uh, put it put this into the practice in a real life yeah so what i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to go back to the chapter 1 and uh, uh, take uh, some verses and then see if i can you know um practice this niridhyasana practice it uh, in the context of how does it apply to me or uh, you know just go a little bit more deeper into it yeah so if you remember the context is amazing uh, in the second chapter so arjuna was in a situation where he has to do this fight and uh, he was feeling dejected depressed he doesn't really want to fight he don't he didn't choose it he didn't he don't want to get anything out of it but he kind of have to do it sort of thing right so he put down his uh, weapons and he was like um i don't know if i want to do this and krishna's job was kind of uh, give him the discourse bring him back um, to the fight yeah so if i was at the place of uh, arjuna and i was in this situation where this fight is actually happening Uh, in that case i would say i feel i would i would probably feel very scared <laughs> very scared and uh, you know there would be some thoughts like uh, maybe we can talk it through <laughs> or something like this we, somehow we can avoid this uh, this uh, uh, fight right it's uh, and then there would be a lot of anxiety you know agitation um, mind will be very active and uh, uh, yeah it it would be very uncomfortable state of mind right it would be very uncomfortable state of mind and that would not be a that would be far from uh, you know an ideal state of mind and being strategic about Uh, the fight in front of you and especially when you know your enemies are even much stronger than you yeah so so i think arjuna is doing pretty good actually as compared to if i put myself there okay so what uh, what so what krishna told so in the, the first verse uh, this is the verse number 15 and 16 um, where krishna gave the teaching and it was like uh, arjuna you should learn to uh the the nature of pain and pleasure is impermanent and you should learn to endure them and the person who is alike in the pain and pleasure and not tormented by them is eligible for liberation yeah tumhe sukh and dukh avichal bhav se sehna seekhna chahiye and jo purush sukh aur dukh mein vichlit nahi hai aur dono mein sambhav hai wo mukti ke yogya hai what does he mean so first of all what does he mean by sukh and dukh right what is this sukh and dukh here 
and interestingly he's saying you should learn to endure sukh and dukh like you should learn to endure pain and pleasure uh, he's not saying you should learn to endure pain <laughs> he's saying you should learn to endure uh, pleasure as well right so you're not uh, experiencing the pleasure the way it's supposed to be experienced also interesting yeah. okay so what does it mean by uh, pain and pleasure here so in my experience there are two kind of pain and pleasure right one is completely physical for example if i um, uh, i like sweet for example and if i have something which uh, which is sweet that sensation is absolutely physical i'm going to feel it around my mouth and it's going to feel sweet and you know that that's like a physical sensation that i feel in my body right there's no this very specific very specific sensation which is which i'm calling pleasure right it's the same way i didn't like certain kind of food uh, some bitter pungent kind of food and uh, i taste it and i again feel something around uh, my mouth some sensation in my mouth and i call that as a pain right completely physical sensation so that could be one kind of uh, pain and pleasure sukha and dukha uh, physical to sukha and dukha uh, the second type on the other hand is a little bit more interesting it's uh, it's what i feel around my it's more subtle what how i feel when i feel attracted or how i feel when i feel repulsed right for example let's say if i meet somebody who i really like after a long time i you know how i'm going to feel right i'm going to see them and then all of a sudden my heart start to sort of you know it's like something inside my chest um start to you know open up or like uh, uh, there, 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 there is some movement of energy something is there right it's a uh, it's very pleasant sensation but it's more subtle than this gross sensation of uh, a tasting of food right tasting of food is like a very gross sensation this one is more subtle right more subtle more uh, ethereal more like uh, it covers more area and it feels more uh, uh, pleasant it's more subtle it's not you cannot say this is like absolutely physical but it definitely is a sensation right so that is a pleasure in 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 a way and the same time if i see somebody i absolutely don't like you know sometime that happens like in india you have been cheated many times right many time people like take advantage and then you see like there's a person who's coming who has the same intention maybe this is a credit card guy <laughs> maybe this these credit card people are coming and then all of a sudden you feel like this uh, this sort of a, a tension this sort of you know like uh, closing off in the same place where you were feeling like open and you know the movement of energy a nice movement this is something different right uh, more like a um, more con- contracting kind of sensation inside your heart uh, that that can be defined as a pain actually right when i see when i find something attractive the 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 pleasantness i feel inside myself and when i feel uh, something repulsive then i the the unpleasantness uh, i feel inside myself right that is also physical sensation but it's like more subtle physical sensation right and then uh, that sensation can also be triggered by you know imaginary events right it can be triggered by memory and thinking about something all of a sudden you know that thought that memory sort of brings the same uh, sort of sensation or when i'm thinking about you know something in the future uh, or i shouldn't say i think like some thought came uh, that is about future like mm, maybe i should i will run out of money some kind of a survival thought is coming and then i feel kind of a pain so this is this sensation doesn't require like food it doesn't require me to have a, a real contact it can be triggered by memories it can be triggered by imaginary objects also right but um, i think that sensation is also what it means by pleasure and pain and that's more uh, uh, that's more i feel like that's more what he meant here by this pain and pleasure or sukha and dukha right and what he's saying is this pain and pleasure is impermanent 
Okay. Okay. So this, uh, these two kind of pain and pleasure is what, um, in my experience, these are the two kind of pain and pleasure that I uh, experience. And what he's saying is these are impermanent and learn to endure them, right? Instead of uh, so what does that mean? Learn to endure them and these are impermanent. So impermanent nature is very clear, right? They are very impermanent even if it is a taste or if it is a sensation in my heart. Both of them are like very quick. It's very quick and uh, it's very it's very short in nature. It's very impermanent. He's true about that. It's very impermanent in the nature and instead of building your life around it you should learn to endure it right you should learn to endure it so I think what it means is uh, you know uh, our natural tendency is basically like if something feels uncomfortable we we sort of build our life in a way so that we can avoid as much discomforting sensation as possible and you know accumulate as much comforting sensation as possible and the interesting thing is like anything uh, uh, that feels good um, at the same time we are signing up for something which is going to feel bad for example if i like being praised right if somebody praised me i feel so good and my heart is open and the sensation and the energy is flowing whatever it is at the same time it's obvious that if somebody is going to criticize me i'm going to feel just the opposite of it right just like choosing one of this uh, um, choosing one will bring the whole set right I have to sign up for both in a way so that strategy will not work in a sense like I somehow can manage my life in a way that everybody's praising me and nobody's criticizing me you know it doesn't make sense in fact most likely the opposite is going to happen right that occasionally I'm gonna be praised and most of the time different kind of people are uh, criticizing me for different things right so building your life around that is not a good way of living a life, right? Creating a life where you can avoid these sensations and you can, you know, you can uh, get more and more of the other kind of sensations. Uh, it's not, it's just not very intelligent way of living a life, right? And what he's saying is you should practice to endure them, right? You should practice to endure them. Instead of your natural tendency is going to be, you know, uh, this your natural tendency is going to be you know building your life uh, like that so how can you learn to endure them uh, one thing one idea that comes to my mind immediately is uh, uh, for example I do a practice of meditation you can take any hours in a within a day and um, you can and I can decide like uh, for that particular hour for example for that one hour I'm not going to move my body or I'm not going to uh, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, you know uh, pain or pleasure i'm feeling in terms of uh, especially in terms of these uh, uh, heart movement or in terms of attachment and aversion kind of uh, movement i am not going to react at best of as the best of my capacity i'm not going to react i'm not going to uh, i'm not going to i'm learning to i will learn to endure it instead of you know um, adjust myself to make myself more comfortable in that way so one thing that is coming to me coming to my mind is that uh, second thing throughout the day <laughs> see, throughout the day you are going to get tons and tons of opportunity here so there's uh, going to be many 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 opportunities where you can just practice it you know instead of uh, uh, reacting or instead of you know avoiding unpleasant sensation and instead of clinging to something very pleasant uh, you can decide to this time I'm just gonna let go this one maybe next I can take it but let me just let go let me learn to just endure it instead of you know um, going after it. okay and the, another idea that comes to my mind is uh, um, I can be more proactive I can actually I know the things that I'm not uh, comfortable with and I know the things I find attractive right so I can uh, intentionally do something like you know I can go and do things uh, which 
I know is uncomfortable and I can, you know, uh, even though if I'm feeling uh, attracted to something, but I'm just going to let go this time, right, instead of uh, doing it. So that, that, that way I can probably practice it in the real life and see if, what effects it, it brings, you know. And then he's saying the person who is uh, think of pain and pleasure as alike and not tormented by them become eligible for uh, liberation, immortality. I think what means here is this, uh, once you are done with this, at least you are not, uh, you know, planning and plotting your life to maximize these sensations, uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, maximizing these sensations, uh, you you are ready to do something more, right? You are ready to explore something more. And then he is going to discuss further, like what exactly is this more. But that's what my understanding is. That's, um, that's what I call, um, you know, it, it, it's a little bit further than intellectual understanding. You contemplate a little bit more in terms of how can I apply this in my life. Uh, and that could be an interesting next step.